let's go into the app deployment toolkit and let's launch the help. We're going to look at the execute MSI. We're going to look at execute process and the remove MSI applications. Let's start with the execute MSI first. As we remember from one of the previous, I ran the main scripts inside here so we could get the um, auto completion. So first thing, I have a CDBurnXP MSI package that I want to, to run here. So let's go down to the installation phase. We have the pre-installation there and the installation. So we don't want to close MS Edge like we did in the previous session. So let's get rid of that one and let's go down to this area where we say execute MSI action we want to install and a path that would be our MSI package let's copy that into the folder here of files just like that grab the name of that so the path here we don't have to add any uh, extra things because the toolkit will look inside the files folder let's add the name here and also remember to put .msi to it so let's put parameters to this one as well because we want to make sure that it is running uh, silently and if we are in doubt let's go to execute MSI okay go down here to the examples you can see what we did here is execute MSI action install path and then the MSI package so we really don't have to do anything more here but we could also add a parameter so let's do that and slash qn for quiet and if you don't understand where that command came from you can just type msi exec and we get all the installation um, properties here from the windows installer we have q for unattended mode and N for no UI. All right, that's our installation. And uh, most of the time, it's a good idea also to have a command called reboot. Really suppress. This makes sure the package will not ask the device to reboot. And we will have that from a central perspective. But that's not needed because that's a part of the standard functionality. If we go to the help, we can see that the parameter already have that in place. See uh, parameters, overwrites the default parameters specified in the XML configuration file, install default and reboot really suppress. So actually we didn't have to put the QN in, but it's a, it's a good thing to do. Then we want to uninstall this as well when we run the uninstall uninstallation. And we go to the uninstallation uh, path here and we put into the parameter here. If we go back to action, we say uninstall and that's going to uninstall our package. Let's just uh, have a look at that. Okay, that was fast. Let's see. Yes, our package did actually install. 
Perfect, now we want to uninstall this package. And I can't right click and do that. But what we can do is we can run a terminal with admin privileges. And let's make it a CMD. Right click this one, say copy as path. Put it here and just say uninstall. And it states that it is uninstalled. Let's just jump in and we can see, yes, it actually removed our package. Now there's better ways of actually making sure that this software is removed. And this is also a recommended way to do. Because when we install this software, let's just uh, go ahead and install it again. If we go into the programs, that's, we have the CD Burner XP. So could we actually remove this software by only searching for the name? Because what if I didn't have access to that MSI in the uninstallation moment? Because installing from Intune or installing from Config Manager, these kinds of cache will be cleaned up eventually. So requiring us to download a source file while we actually can remove the software from the local cache instead. That would be the best idea, right? So instead of using the execute MSI with an uninstallation to the file that we have inside the library, we should use this command instead and say remove MSI application. And if we go to the examples here, we can go and say remove MSI application name and Adobe Flash. That will remove all versions of the software that matches the name. So the name here. We could also make a broader search and say Adobe, and then it will match whatever name where Adobe is in. If I put Microsoft in it, it would take away the uh, Microsoft 365 apps and the Edge and this web view and the engine management extension, Microsoft OneDrive, if at all possible. So what it does is it searches down to the registry uh, on installation area. Actually, we can have a look into the registry and go to software and to Microsoft Windows current version uninstall and it looks for a name called that what you search for here and what it does it goes to the uninstall string and then tries to run that so it's quite nice but let's try to use it here instead of uh, flash we are going to have CD burner inside the name like that, and let's make sure we have the proper name, CD Burner, like that. So I don't need to give the full name here. Let's just say that this installation should also upgrade an existing package that exists out there. Maybe there are one, maybe there are none. I don't know, but I want it to upgrade an existing version of CD Burner XP. So I'll put that string also into our pre-installation because then it will try to uninstall the software that exists on the device and then install the new version that I plan to deploy. All right, so let's try this out. Okay, we'll run the software here and I'll refresh this page just to show you what's happening. Oh, it's gone. And it's back. So the function we just created is actually a very, very good and recommended way to upgrade software on your devices. Let's go to the Intune Locks library and look into the um, PSF deployment toolkit here. 
And let's open this with CM Trace. Let's see what happened now. Okay. So I initialized the installation of this package. And it came down to get information for installed application name, CD Burner, just as we specified. It found some installed um, application and then it matches whatever it found in the registry. It then removes the application using this GUID and then it tries to install the new package afterwards. So this is quite impressive, right? And here you can see actually the full qualified path and all the parameters that is added to the package while installing using the execute-msi. Next up is the execute process. So execute process can execute exe files or whatever you want. And in this example, we write execute process path and whatever you need. And that's just great. So here you can see if all of a sudden we have a path that we can specify here in order to come to our uh, files library where we didn't have to when we had the MSI. So let's remove the CD burner XP and then let's start utilizing the execute process. Now, my example here, I have the notepad++ 8.4.6. Of course, we need to uh, modify our app vendor. Notepad++. Let's not make pluses because some code doesn't like that in the logs or file names. 8.4.6. And as you might saw on my earlier videos, to have a good standard, we'll put PS in front of here, so it's easier to see the log files. And then notepads 8.4.6. Let's go down to the installation phase here and execute process and um, let's just get some help from the help down here and paste it in actually i want to use this one and we'll put it down here let's make sure we get the proper name from this guy we write there files and the name and exe. We have parameters. And how do we determine what parameter we need for the Notepad++? Well, we can search the internet. In that we find we, we see JSON. He creates a lot of good stuff when it comes to un unattended installations. So we can enter the command slash s and this is a capital s a it needs to be capital otherwise it won't work so let's do that capital s finalized and let's do a window style hidden as well just to make sure that nothing is going to pop up or anything on the user screen now we need to put that exe file into our library. Well, let's put that into files. Just right there. And let's try to install this package. If we go to the locks, see that it creates our log file here.
and it installed our Notepad++ package. All right, I want to uninstall this package again. So how do we do that? Well, JSON writes that we have a uninstall.exe in our program data files. Let's have a look at that. So going to C program, program files. Now we, we're using the 64 bits. Do we have a uninstall down here? Yes, we have. Let's right click that one, say copy as path and go to our uninstall down here. Now this is our path where we have the uninstall exe. Now let's see if JSON has any good tips. Well, capital S again. Okay. Let's use that as parameter. So we are going to utilize somewhat this one down here. So instead of having this path, I want to use um, variable instead. We could uh, go to Simon X and he has so a uh, cheat sheet here. So instead of writing program files, I could just use this environment variable. Let's do that then. So if we change this one like that and then take this part and add here, we should be good to go, right? So we have parameter and we have our executable, just like that. All right, let's save it and let's try to unsaw this package. So we want to have a terminal with um, administrative accesses again. Right click the deploy application XC. Edit here and write on the store. Let's see what happens. So it says uninstall started. It actually removed the package. Let's just look into locks as well. Uh, as it is a uninstall, it creates an underlock for us called underscore uninstall. It goes to verify that our uninstall XE actually exists before continuing. And then we see here what it's going to execute. See program files, notepad plus plus, uninstall slash s. So we have a framework here that can install MSI packages. It can install executables and uh, it's very easy. And we have extended logging to do um, the, the hard work for us as well. So um, this was the, I guess, three most used processes or functions inside PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit. Thank you.